every year during the month of December as I read the great words concerning the birth of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1 and 2 or Luke. And I've talked about that. But every year something happens different inside of me. I want to talk about it briefly as we move towards a time of communion, which of course was Christ's it, it was the result of Christ's crowning achievement. It was a result of the cross, and it celebrates the life that, that the cross and what Jesus did there produces for us. But I want to I wanna talk about something that always happens to me as I soak myself in that, in that scriptural narrative and the wonder that... It always gives me a new sense of wonder, a new, it, it always brings a new revelation, new insight. And so this day after Christmas, uh, the day after we celebrate his birth, I've been thinking about the wisdom and the majesty of that. Um, and I want to talk about that and the magnificence uh, and how it has spoken to me. I think it'll prepare us for, for communion, but also it'll prepare us for 2022. And, and this morning, I'm not going to preach like I normally would. I don't feel like that's what I wanted to do. I have one. But it's like I told Carol yesterday, I just want to talk. And I want to share some things from here and in my heart. And then receive communion. You ever think about what it took to accomplish the amazing feat we just celebrated? I mean, it had never been done before. It's never going to be done ever again. It's a one-time event. And God literally had to move heaven and earth to accomplish that. The laws of nature had to be suspended. That had never been done before. Biological laws had to be suspended. Evidently, he knows how to do that. Laws of the universe itself, universal laws had to be suspended. The workings of heaven, the working of heaven's government that had been established from eternity past, however far you go. The workings of heaven and its, its entire government, it had to be changed in order for this feat, this, this event to take place. The positioning of angels, the, the positioning of angel armies, the assignments that angels had had as far back as they had ever been created. For some of them, some divisions of those angel armies and millions of angels within those divisions, they had to be reassigned to get this accomplished, to come to earth, to guard what was about to happen, to guard... God himself, the Son of God, who would become, he would become a seed of a woman, an embryo, and have to be protected because of, of Satan's attempt to kill him. All of that had to, had to be arranged for. Divisions of angel armies had to be moved from different parts of the universe and they had to do it in such a way, or it had to be done in such a way that, that they were totally obedient to what the Godhead wanted. They were not told all the reasons. It kept, God kept it hid in himself. But it began a massive rearrangement. Jesus himself would take on a role that he had never taken on before. Uh, he had always had eternal responsibilities as king. He was king of heaven, king of the universe, 
and uh, was there at the beginning when the earth was spoken into being. His words caused that as Holy Spirit brooded over them and grew them so that the earth could be. His responsibilities of king or being king. He had never not been king. But now it's changing. I've often wondered what the angels who didn't know must have thought when he took his crown off and put it at the feet of Father God. What they must have thought when he took off royal robes, they had never seen him without that government authority upon him. They'd never seen him without a crown. They had never come into the throne room and seen him without royal vestures on, never. I've been thinking about that. What, what must it have been like for the angels, but, all, but what must it have been like for Father to see that and Holy Spirit to see that and Holy Spirit to move over who is the other self of Christ, triune being, supernatural oneness, how it works, we don't know. We will know one day, it's a mystery now. Why God keeps that a secret, I don't know. But he did. And now the personality and presence of the other self of Christ moves over and he hovers over an empty throne, protecting it until one day the King of Kings will come, the Lord of Lords will come, and he will sit there again. All of that had to be set aside, and a government office in heaven was emptied. The responsibilities wouldn't have to be taken over by Father himself because we know Holy Spirit was accompanying Christ to earth. I wonder what the angels must have thought as they saw this happening. Think about the trust that must have well, not must have, it was revealed. Jesus had to have complete trust in the Father and in the Holy Spirit to get this done because he was emptying himself of authority, of government, power. He was becoming a microscopic seed. So all his trust had to be placed upon the Father. Somehow he did that. I trust you. I don't, I, I know that I am, I'm taking on a different role and I trust that you will somehow get me back to where I need to be, but, but even further than that, a different level than, than who I've ever been. And how can you ever say about, about the Godhead that statement, that the Godhead will now be something it's never been? You talk about a major shift of something. The Godhead would now become something it had never been. Of course, the possibilities were always there because we know everything. Gabriel said, remember, everything's possible with him. And we're starting to see something here. They trusted, yes, universal laws and, and laws of nature. They were suspended to, to get this king to earth. And that tells us it can happen. I don't know how to do that, but it tells me the Godhead knows how to suspend the laws of the universe if it takes it to accomplish his purpose. He, he can suspend the laws of nature if he wants to. Again, Gabriel said it. God can do anything. That's the understanding behind this. And this year, I just, for some reason, the majesty of that it began to just unfold to me because, I mean, there's, there's so much un unfolding behind the scenes and still is unfolding behind the scenes to this day. So many possibilities were now possible. Miracles were now possible. 
They were possible then when he came, but they're still possible. Healings were possible. In his own ministry, he, he healed thousands of people. We're told there were occasions when everyone that came was healed. Everyone. Thousands. Every one of them healed. That happened on a, a few occasions in his life. Will that happen today? Yes, I believe so. I believe there will be times coming in the next glory season in this ecclesia move where everybody is everybody that needs healed is going to be healed. We saw a precursor of that in the Exodus. When the ram's horn blew, over a million people walked out and every one of them were healed. Will that happen again? Yes. Why hasn't it been happening? The ecclesia is not at the level that it should be in representing, in representing who Christ is. His total representation, remember, in Ephesians 4.11 is fivefold. We haven't allowed for that fivefold ministry. But the ecclesia now is saying yes to it. We want it all. And when that representation comes... The representation of his power to heal comes. And yes, I believe there's coming a time when everyone that comes will be healed. I look forward to that. It reveals the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth came along with Jesus. The world's shouting out for truth. The question, what is truth? The truth is found in him. Jesus said it himself, your word, Lord, that's what's true. This world is trying to find it a different way. They try to surmise what is truth or, you know, get somebody famous opinion or whatever. No, he's truth. And at some point, wisdom finds or seeks truth. In our times... I believe the truth is going to be revealed at a different level. And I begin to see that this year. And I was like, wow, look at what's happened with knowledge increasing. As, as the closer we get to the time when he is going to return to earth and he is going to take that place of king of everything, of master ruler. <laughs> but it says that knowledge is going to increase. It's happening. I was, I was thinking... You know, about this is the end of 2021. Just go back 100 years to 1921 and think of how the knowledge has increased. It's amazing. And it, it's the same in the body of Christ. Think of the difference today can, to then. Think of the difference knowledge-wise and revelation-wise of the ecclesia now in our times compared to just 20 years ago. It's, it's incredible. I don't even want to hear what I preached 20 years ago. I'm embarrassed. I'm like, well, there's, there's a whole lot better way to say that and I'm not sure about that. It's increasing but we're moving into an accelerated time of this, which is going to change things. Change is coming. But it also reveals something that I always think about after Christmas, before Christmas, during Christmas. But just Christmas just kind of just states it, but it's every day. Yeah, he didn't come to be king just once. He was that, all those principles of who he is forever. But it revealed to us a God friend. Jesus and his other self, the Holy Spirit, are God friends. That really struck me, and I just wanted to even just, again, I'm just talking today, and I'm, but I felt like I just wanted to. I remember I was watching this old channels that most of you wouldn't watch. Carol wouldn't watch them. You know, but I think it was Roosevelt. He would have fireside chats. He just sat down at the fire and talked to the people. 
I thought, I'm going to have a fireside chat, but I don't have a fireplace, so I'll just chat. But anyway, um, but he's a God friend that sticks closer than a brother. Um, you know, I have a brother, Dutch, um, and he's, he's, he's great. Um, and you can, I can depend on him. I get my, I'm, when I had my hip fixed a few weeks ago, uh, well, a couple months, I guess, whenever it was, but he, I just called and said, okay, Dutch, I can't preach this week. Oh, I'll be there because he's, He's a brother. If he called this week and said, I got to have you, well, I'm dropping everything and coming because he's a brother, you know. And he's, he's good at that. But, and don't tell him this, he's sensitive. <laughs> he's not Jesus. <laughs> he's not deity. Um, but I've proved a friendship for 50 years plus now, 43 or so here at the Oasis. I have spent three to four hours on average every day for over 50 years with him on average. Um, some days more, some days less, but on average. I don't know how many, when I came in this morning, the sun was just coming up over Middletown. And I actually paused at the top of the hill where I come in. I come in back towards Lebanon this way. And I, I thought, how many sunrises, Lord, have I spent with you? Hundreds. Hundreds. Talking to him. What, what are we doing today? Lord, this, that. Speak to me. Because I've proved a friendship. And he came to be more than God. He, he's God, but God friend. And, and amazingly, over those years, I've, I've learned you can go, you can actually grow closer to him. Anybody can. Any of the heirs, you'd pursue it. But you can, you can actually grow closer to him. And I remember even starting out years ago, I was, I was relationally as close to him as I am now. I mean, I was a born-again son of God. But experientially, over 50 years or so, I've grown a lot closer and um, I began to learn the closer I got. I began to know I can pick up his voice in the middle of a crowd. You got to get, you have to know someone friendship wise, relationship wise for that to happen. Other, you know, it's like <clears throat> the apostles said, there are many voices. Of course there are. How do you pick out his? You got to familiarize yourself with that and live in constant dialogue. And I try to do that. I fail sometimes, but I try to live in constant dialogue. I can watch TV, but there's a dialogue going. I can be driving, there's a dialogue going. You, you stay open that way and you can understand him more. You can, this one's hard to, to I mean, even think about, but we have the mind of Christ. You, the closer in friendship and relationship I have drawn over the years, the more I think in line with his mind. I don't even, I, I, it's, I don't even know how to teach that. But I, I just, I, I remember years ago, thinking, I want to think like you, Lord. Well, you have the mind of Christ. Well, how do I do that? Well, that was friendship, relationship, spending time. He has told me secrets. 
He has um, given me revelation, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, shown me the discerning of spirit, special faith. He's taught me about angels. No one taught me about angels. That was our God. That was the Lord. That was Holy Spirit. And I didn't even ask on that one. He just taught me. The number one thing that I've done for 43 years, and I'm not going to say I've done it well, because I could do it a lot better, but I tried. The number one, let's say it that way. The number one thing I have tried to do is spend time with King Jesus every day. I've tried to. It's not a chore for me. It's a way of life. It's exciting. It's challenging. I love it. I was thinking, though, about all of this. What a privilege, but how can, how can the likes of us, me, spend time with him? You can do it. It's amazing. It's more than a king. See, he, yes, he is Lord. He is Lord, yes. He's my boss, yes. But he's my friend. For me, that is something that I just wanted to express and say to you as we begin. We end an year, a year, begin another one. Walk with him. He has so much to share with you. You can be his friend. God friends with us. One privilege of friendship has been coming to know some of, some of his nature. Um, I don't know all of his nature. I don't know that anybody's ever going to mine that out. But I've begun to, to know some of his nature and some of his ways, some of how he thinks, some of his likes and dislikes. You know, sometimes you hear people pontificate, he's this, he's that, he's something else. And you just, no, that's not the one I know. And of course, it's available again. It's, it's available to all the heirs. You can know him as Lord, but there's more if you want it. You can walk with him, talk with him in dialogue. You can live in that dialogue. You don't have to be weird about it, and please don't be. The older I get, the more I can't help. I don't like the weirdness. It's like, please, you know? But for me, lordship isn't a problem. He's my friend. Friendships, why even, uh, friendship with the Lord, lordship, uh, or his lordship and his friendship with me is why I'm even here this morning. I don't even know where I'd be today. I do know I wouldn't be here. Years ago, when there was a lot of people that said some pretty bad things about Carol and me, and, and I, it got to pretty bad, and a lot of people left. And I, I said, God, just let me. I've got a lot of things I need to do, and just let me go. And uh, I'd like to do something else. These people are bugging me. They think they know the truth and they don't know anything. And uh, I, bugged, I bugged him enough <laughs> to where he finally said, okay, go. And, uh, and he added, hey, I'll bless you. And I knew he meant it. He, well, he never says anything he doesn't mean. I knew I could go and, and, and he would bless me and I was... <clears throat> going to probably do be, become president of a Bible school or something like that. 
because I pretty much had it with people. And uh, so, oh, man, I'm, I'm free. I'm free. And uh, again, the reason I'm here is because of friendship, lordship. And I, I thought, nah. You ever been around a close friend? You probably have. If you have a close friend, I don't know. But you ever been around a close friend and you know they don't like something, but they haven't said anything? And that's the way it was. It's like, hmm. So I went out to the lake and I, I said, okay, Lord, you said you could, I could go and you'd bless me. But you want me to? He said, no. Nope. Settled it. I will do what you want. I'll do it how you want. I'll walk with you. We were talking the other day. It's a good thing we didn't do that. Because he came through like you can't hardly believe. He did what he said. But I, I'm pretty sure. See, he didn't, com he didn't make a command on me. He didn't command me to do it. Friendship did it. Okay. He's my friend. He's my Lord friend. Well, my point today is think about the wonder of this. Yeah, past, yes, he came, thank God. But go a little bit deeper and think about the wonder of this. Think about the awesome, wise, power, majestic, the knowledge behind the Godhead moving heaven and earth to be with us. His other, so his other self could be with us. So we could be in right standing with God. One more thing, and then we're going to receive communion. And this is so incredible to me. And again, it's just me thinking this year, trying to get a perspective. But one thing incredible to me is at times I have heard his voice deep inside of me giving me prophetic words for our times. I never take that for granted. I never take it lightly. And I've always been amazed afterwards that he talked to me. During when it's happening, I'm just focused and, you know, locked in. But I'm at, afterwards, I'm like, wow, he's still speaking to me. He's still talking to the church. He's still... Uh, he's still talking to the nations. And yesterday, again, as I thought, I'm not doing a normal thing, came down here for three hours or so. And yesterday I heard him again. I heard him remind me of something. Heard it real clear. And it was different than what I was thinking I was going to do and different than I told Carol I was going to do. Why? Because I asked. This word leads us. He reminded me of a word that he'd given me. And uh, this word leads us to communion, but also prepares us for happenings, I believe, in 2022, because this is going to be the finest hour so far for the ecclesia. No doubt in my mind about it. But he reminded me of this, and it will lead us to communion. The forces of my kingdom have been prepared to initiate the advance. My kingdom will advance. My angels have heard the command begin the advance. Open glory roads for my heirs. My Holy Spirit has prepared the strategies for the advance. My ecclesia has been aligned for the advance. 
I have tuned the voices of my apostles and prophets for the advance. I'm leading the advance of my kingdom on the earth. I lead advances. I lead victories. I lead triumph. I lead deliverance. I am rising to lead my kingdom in a magnificent advance that I promised. And I'm standing to lead a breakout advance. Health kingdom will now experience might it cannot withstand. My ecclesia will break the attack of covenant breakers. There will now come the breaking up of demonic plans. Overwhelming force will now come to bear upon diabolical structures of darkness. Evil and deep-rooted iniquity will be uprooted by my advancing kingdom. Warrior champions are rising to, to follow me in unrelenting purpose and aggressive faith. The world has not experienced the aggressiveness of my kingdom as it now will experience. For the synergizing of generational winds are blowing and they are driving my march to change history. Evil empires will crumble. Evil structures will fall. Evil philosophies will be destroyed by truth. Evil roots deep within nations will be exposed and destroyed by the faith decrees of my ecclesia. Hear the sound of heaven. Hear the sound of fresh winds of Pentecost. Hear the sound of marching. Hear the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hear the sound of shoutings from radical warriors. Hear the drums of a conquering king. Their resounding message is now resonating in the core of my remnant. My Holy Spirit is stirring their hearts with my heart. And they will now press with me into mega breakthroughs. Supernatural, miraculous turnarounds will now break through as I will reveal myself as God of the covenant. Explosive change will now break through. Bondage will suddenly break. And brand new life and freedom will witness that my liberating force has now come in a new way. Yes, I am rewriting the story of the downcast, the bruised, the, the forsaken, the wounded, the captives. Their witness of me shall be uh, the declaration I have made through the ages. Yes, I am the Lord mighty to save. I am the breaker. I am the God of breakthrough. I will be seen in their life, breaking them through. I will march when I want to march, I will go where I want to go, and I will do whatever I want to do. The attempt of the forever loser and his kingdom to resist me will be futile. Goat states, and I saw, when I saw this or heard this word, you know how you see Red states, blue states, I saw goat states and sheep states in a vision flash. Goat states that have visibly shook their fist in my ecclesia's face will now visibly be shaken by ripened calamities until like Pharaoh, they let my people go. My remnant will break through. My ecclesias will break through. Strongholds of hell will scatter and shatter. Glory that dispels darkness will shine. Do not faint. Do not quit. Do not turn back. Do not become passive. Advance with me and my kingdom. Advance under Holy Spirit anointings. Advance with my angel armies. 
Enter by faith the new season of breakthrough and you will enter breakthrough after breakthrough. My winds are shifting the conditions in your favor. My power is shaking the heavens and the earth. Know that it's a shaking in your favor. It's a shaking that shakes doors open. It's a shaking that shakes loose, hidden riches. It's a shaking that uncovers your inheritance. It is a shaking that breaks chains of bondage. It is a shaking that shakes you free. For I will shake my people free. You will now see the change that I have planned. Look forward and step forward into it. You will now see that change from wilderness wandering has come to awesome times of transition, transitions into promised places, transitions into promised times, transitions into dreams of your heart, transitions into plenty. Your conditions will change and conditions in my covenant nations will change. My winds of change will blow upon my remnant. They will blow upon my church and miraculous change will be seen manifesting to displace barrenness. For the Lord decrees, I am ending the barren times. I am ending the dark Barren times, hell has propagated against my church. I am releasing the fresh winds of a new Pentecost. And that wind will blow darkness away. It will blow away the barren times. It will blow away the strategies of darkness. It will blow down the obstacles to my blessings. It will blow. It will blow down the obstacles of cultural resistance. It will blow down the obstacles of government resistance. It will blow down the deceitful barricades of, of humanism and lawlessness. It will blow down the antichrist activi activism meant to harm you. I am sending the winds of change. Lift up your eyes and look with expectancy. Lift up your voice and declare with expectancy. Lift up your hands and worship with expectancy. I'm changing the seasons. I'm sending transformational winds and I am soaking you with my favor. I am freeing you to rise up with wings like eagles and soar on Holy Spirit winds. I'm freeing you to run and not be weary, walk and not faint. I'm empowering you to pass through the floods and not be harmed. I'm empowering you to pass through the fire and not be burned. I'm changing your times and your seasons. You will now enter the birthing season of hopes and dreams and confessions of faith. Let your heart embrace it. Let your soul embrace it. Let your mind embrace it. Miraculous Breakthrough winds of transformation are now blowing. 2022 will surely be a year of transformative change. Nations will change. My church will change. Culture will change. Favoring winds are blowing. Put your sails up and let me move you into new times. Hallelujah. Singers and musicians, come please. Ushers, come to your stations for communion time. I don't know how you feel, but I feel I'm glad I came. Mm. Put yourself behind the scenes. Your faith will go to a different level. Lord, I thank you so much for moving heaven and earth to be with us. And thank you for your crowning achievement. A willingness to leave where you were. What an understatement you had made. 
And yet you wanted to make us something. Uh, make something out of all of us individually. Everyone. Destiny for everyone. Life for everyone. Hope for everyone. Love towards everyone. Thank you, Lord, that you moved heaven and earth to come. And we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you made on Calvary's cross. As we've celebrated your birth this past week, we now celebrate your resurrection and the life you provide. Thank you for living to make intercession for us. Let these communion elements, the bread, the wine, let it truly represent to us what and who you really are what you did and who you really are. Thank you, Lord, that we are sitting at table like apostles or disciples 2,000 plus years ago. They were sitting around a table with their friend, their God friend. We love you, Lord. We are unashamed. Love you, Lord. Love you, Lord.